Welcome to SBG TV News for Friday, May 16th. I'm Jimmy Prince with the details. 1,948 sixth graders took to the examination room today at 17 centers across the country, creating history as they are the first cohort to sit the Caribbean Primary Exit Assessment Examination, the CPEA. The CPEA replaces the Common Entrance Examinations, making it possible for students to earn a total of 40% through internal assessment. The change created some anxiety among parents and guardians. SBG TV caught up with some outside of the exam centers in Kingsdown and they shared their views on the new examinations format and their expectations. I think it's a good change. Um, for some people, they complain that it is harder. But to me, I think it is easier. It prepared them for secondary school. Um, when they go over to secondary school, it's the same thing they're going to be doing basically. At first, when I heard about the CPA introduction, I felt that it should have been done from the grade 5 students since the children would have already been in grade 6. And we know that grade 6 should be more of revision. But with working with the teachers and the children, working on the projects that they had, the only thing is that I felt that a lot should have been more open to the parents. Well, I was a bit skeptical, but then working with my child, with teachers during the school year, I find more comfortable. It was comfortable going into it. Meanwhile, there were mixed reviews from some of the students in the Kingstown area on the CPEA examinations today as they exited the exam rooms. The English was quite easy to me, but the maths was a little challenging, and the science was a bit challenging as well. It's kind of easy, but some of the questions was kind of difficult. <laughs> and how was the math? Oh, kind of easy too. I loved it. It was so easy, but this book, the maths, maths been kind of, kind of give me problem. Been can, been chatting, language arts and science. I sure do good for them. It was really good. Uh, I didn't have trouble with anything. I think I hope I I hope I did well. Okay. Well, it was challenging, especially the English, but most of the questions were easy. The language, especially, was quite was quite challenging. But the math was quite easy, and the science was easy, but just had a little bit of confusing stuff in there. It was good. Good. Everything was good, but the science was challenging. Very easy. It's very easy. And we're looking for you in the top three or top one? Top one. Top one. Okay, and what's your name? Alianta Thomas. Alianta Thomas. I've been making sure looking for you, you know. Some of the students told SVG TV News that the transition to the new structure made it a bit easier for them, while others described it as challenging. Was the changeover from the common entrance before to the CPEA? How was that for you? Was it good? Uh, yes. yes. Um, angry because it, the common entrance was easier than the city. Yes, we kind of scared at first, but it turned out easy. What are some of the things that you had to do before coming into the exam? The project that was very challenging. I can't do and portfolio. Okay, so one more question I had to ask you How was the teacher support? How was the parent support? Were you supported? Yes, Leslie. Thank you, teacher. Internet con connectivity is essential for developing a modern state in a modern world. That's the view of Minister of Information and Communication Technology, Camilla Gonzalez, speaking at a fair earlier today at Heritage Square to commemorate World Telecommunications Day. Gonzalez says as SBG develops, so, must, so too must be its broadband internet service. St. Vincent and the Grenadines, if you look at the data, is not doing badly for this part of the world in terms of our broadband infrastructure and development. But we could do a lot better. And there have been a few advances since I became minister. Some of them I had a role in. Some of them just happened to happen while I was in the chair. But we have had increased internet speed now available and we expect internet speed available options to get even faster. He noted that if St. Vincent and the Grenadines is to position itself as a place which welcomes and attracts businesses, there must be quality broadband and internet connectivity. We have to recognize today, as we go from booth to booth, as we look at everything, as we listen to the children, 
that one of the fundamental infrastructural requirements for St. Vincent and the Grenadines in the future is a, an, a capable, fast, responsive broadband network. Meantime, the Minister Gonzalez said providers have to ensure there is collaboration with the government to provide these services cheaply and the soonest. Those are the three lights by which we judge our foray and our partnership into broadband um, internet and development of this country. Because this is a critical thing. When the government was building roads, we built them ourselves. So we didn't have to worry about the private sector, but this is a new day. And the things that the government is looking to is not how tall the stilt walker is or not how many names a provider can change its name to from one name to the other name to the other name because those are marketing tactics and they're important on the business front but on the developmental front what we are concerned about is the speed the affordability and the widespread access of broadband technology uh, St. Vincent and the Grenadines maintained its press, pre press freedom score of 17, ranking second behind St. Lucia in the Americas, according to the 2013 statistics. These statistics are based on the 2013 figures from Freedom House, a U.S. non-governmental organization that assesses and compares media independence throughout the world. The latest report also shows this country at 18 overall out of a total of 197 countries surveyed in the global rankings. St. Vincent and the Grenadines tied Jamaica for second place in the rankings, followed by Barbados and Costa Rica, and both ranked fourth. Despite the positive news for media transparency here, the organization has reported that global press freedom fell to its lowest level in over a decade. The report stated that hopes raised by the Arab Spring were dashed by major regression in Egypt, Libya, and Jordan, with marked setbacks in Turkey, Ukraine, and a number of countries in East Africa. It also stated that media freedom in the United States deteriorated primarily to attempts by the government to inhibit reporting on national security issues. John Farrell, a 42-year-old taxi driver of Unionville, Beckway, fell to his death shortly after 10 this morning. Police told SVG TV News that Farrell fell from the upper floor of a house at Mount Pleasant that was under construction. Leslie Ann Farrell, wife of the deceased man, said that she was told that her husband had gone to the site to deliver something and was making his way down from the roof when he fell. This is the second such death within the last two years. In May 2012, Cecil Basden, a 49-year-old resident of Lago Heights, died after falling from a roof of a business place in Pauls Avenue in Kingstown. A resounding yes was given by the Archbishop John Holder as he uh, answered the question as to the relevance of Anglicanism in the contemporary Caribbean. The Most Reverend Holder is the Bishop of Barbados and the Archbishop of the Church in the province of the West Indies. Last evening, he delivered the 50th anniversary memorial lecture of the Bishop College Kingstown. In his lecture, Reverend Holder highlighted the connection between Anglicanism in the contemporary society. It is a practice that can still be there in our society in the world, but it's one that we cannot afford. Life is far too nuanced and complex to fit into any one ideological or theological package. Anglicanism continues to hold up before us some ideals that can only make us better as human beings and our communities far more pleasant places in which to live. So the question, is Anglicanism still relevant to the contemporary Caribbean? The Rysungan answer, yes, it surely is. The Archbishop added that Anglicanism rejects the approach of messiahs who appear on fast tracks to the land of milk and honey. It offers our society a sensible, open-eyed approach that allows us to deal with the issues as challenging as they are. And thirdly, we practice flexibility. Flexibility that connects to reality. Yes, we have our teachings, we have our rules of discipline, we have our moral positions, but like our Lord, we worship, we pray, and we live very conscious of the fact that given the nature of humanity, we often have to adjust in order to embrace. This is SVG Television. We'll be right back with Carnival Beat.
Well, well, the Carnival Development Corporation is again providing patrons an opportunity to be a part of Vinci Mass via pay-per-view for the major carnival events. Persons will now have to pay more for the service. Speaking at a CDC media conference earlier this week, Marketing Coordinator of the CDC, Anthony Denny, announced that the CDC has taken the decision to have persons wishing to have pay-per-view pay the highest price that is being paid at the gate for the particular event. So in the case of Miss SPG where um, it is $45 for the double-decker stand, persons wishing to view pay-per-view this year will have to fork out $45. That is the policy of the Carnival Development Corporation for 2014. On Sunday, June 1st, Carnival Revelers will journey to Victoria Park for the 2014 Island Network in association with Hits 103.7 Soca Swing. According to Island Network's manager, Herrick Horn, this year's event will be staged under the theme, Big People Party. Fitting to its name, it will feature regional Soca artist, Trinidadian Daryl Farmer Nappy Henry, who is popularly known for his song, Big People Party, and Grenadian Hollis Mr. Killer Map, the roller poly creator. Those Skinny Fabulous, the, local, the Lime Soka Dance, Fire Empress, Bumani, Scorpion, Keith Currency, Royal, and DJ20. Horn said patrons can look forward to the usual competitions and activities that have propelled the show to being one of the major events of Vinci Mass. Miss Lime in the 2014 Miss SBG pageant, Shadisha George, describes herself as an avid reader, among many other things, and explains to SBG TV News that she draws much of her inspiration from writers who convey real experiences by presenting true accounts of their challenges and how they overcame them. In Carnival Beat this evening, we get an opportunity to learn more about Miss Lime as we continue with our one-on-one -on -one interviews with this year's Miss SBG contestants. Jamisha Wright has a report. 21-year-old Shadisha George, Miss Lime, and contestant number five in this year's Miss SVG pageant is of the view that her natural talent, involvement in community service, strong faith, and humility is what make her a true embodiment of a rounded Vincentian young woman. Recently, George met up with SVG TV as we get to know the contestants a bit more intimately. What a typical day is like for you? Let's say on the weekend. What do you do on the weekend, Saturday, when most of us spend the day cleaning, washing, whatever? What do you do? That's exactly what I do. I get up, but I get up really late. On a Saturday? On a Saturday. Okay. It's like my day of rest and relaxation. I get up and that's about 10 o'clock and then i start washing well not washing i don't literally wash <laughs> i throw the clothes in the machine and then i start to do what i have to do i do a bit of cleaning i don't cook and that was a question you don't we don't cook no my grandmother does that so you have never prepared a sunday lunch yes i have i have but i don't need to because my grandmother does that right so it's a bit redundant you don't want to have too much food <laughs> it's not one <laughs> no, no no so tell me what have you cooked before what is your favorite dish <laughs> to prepare to prepare <laughs> tell me oh god girl well ramen let me think about it um what is my favorite dish to prepare to prepare uh-huh what can you prepare best I've been told that my lasagna is really good. Okay. Uh, I do I do some really good lasagna and some really good desserts and pies and things like that. I don't do flour. You're just a few weeks away from the Miss SVG pageant. Um, if you have your way, mm -hmm. would you like discontinue, quit, or you would continue? You know, <laughs> this thing, this Miss SVG journey, this Miss SVG experience, it is much more than you see from the outside. I wouldn't change, I wouldn't change my mind, I wouldn't say, you know, I'll do it next year because it's something that I always wanted to do, but I was just going with more discipline. We also journeyed to George's Lomans Hill resident, where we had a glass of Woodbridge Moscato and saw her attempting a game of pool. <laughs> This is actually good that you have a little time to relax. I know it's very really hectic for you now. Yeah, this is a cat's or it's my child. Okay. Um, what else? That's about the TV lag. On Sundays, though, I look at me. Oh, I have to. Yeah, but that's my thing. I mean, I look at my girl Kenya. Yeah. See what she's up to. I mean, I'm a housewife girl. 
Join us on Monday during Carnival Beat for our one-on-one -on -one with contestant number eight, Jamelia Neverson. Jamisha Wright reporting for Carnival Beat. Yeah.